you know, we'll be talking to Julian in depth uh, about his recent travels. Today's show has been titled Boxing for Syria. In Turkey, um, on the border with Syria, um, for, for Syrian refugees. It's an, an American charity in origin, um, and a lot of the founders are from the Syri uh, are American Syrians. that you're a thug. In, in the school itself, and we tried to give them all a chance to, 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 go, to do yeah. the boxing. And um, any time we'd try and catch half, half an hour's rest, um, we, we'd have to hide the, the suitcase uh, in a tent somewhere. Sometimes we, it was in the scorching sun. So we wanted to leave them with, with something that you can take away forever, which is... I really believe that one day, inshallah, they'll get their country if back. You have to believe it. So and then you have to you, admit, yeah. If you don't... That's your only I mean, hope, I understand. I, and I can understand. The but next, I can't the, really understand. The but. next week... The next week, I met people who have been were hoping since 1948. And we'll, we'll come on to that. But uh, having left him and getting on, the, getting on the bus, you know, I thought, I just have to go now. You know, the hate in their voices was just something, you know, it's just something different. I mean, can you imagine? To Beirut. Um, and when we got there, the, the problem, having got through um, customs and whatnot, the problem arose that our uh, luggage hadn't arrived, the boxing equipment. Basically, we're waiting by the. Uh, in careful. Like the Irish or, or English Scotsman, isn't it? Well, it sounds like a joke. Yeah, it but, does. Uh, yeah, but um, and Jamal's on a British passport, but obviously he's got a Muslim name. Uh, so these um, internal security forces, who are essentially police but dressed like army and armed with with guns accordingly, sat us on chairs by the side of the road and um, were asking questions separate cars and they've already already they're going through my phone um, already they're, they're flicking through um, uh, pictures on my phone they're taken to the, to the police station where there's a bed w w with handcuffs uh, attached <laughs> to it um, it seems like we're in for a long night um, and they wouldn't even let us sit down be a maximum security prison and he wasn't there when we got there uh, and we were handcuffed and blindfolded and lined up against the wall and that is the moment when you just question are, the are, these, the, are, are these the are these the government or are these our ISIS in, in disguise where they think I'm ISIS I think they're ISIS <laughs> Do you think you were going to line up for the firing squad? Yeah, you, you get, the, the paranoia sets in, but obviously I've been... No phone, I don't know nothing. I was stripped completely naked before I went in there um, at gunpoint, and I tried. I said to him in Arabic, Hukukul Insania, human rights, and he, 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 they showed me the gun. He would have shown his bend, human rights. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> bend, bend down, completely naked. Okay, you know, like, what can I say? You, it's humiliating. Do you do the hero squats? Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Who have fought against the Israelis. I feel safer in the Palestinian camp than I, than I feel in, in Beirut uh, or travelling around Lebanon. And um, the first thing I put when I, when I got back into the camp um, and I saw the picture of Yasser Arafat, I took my picture next to it and said, among friends. And when, when you are among people who feel that you have an affinity with them, they will make you feel like, like one of them. Well, no, You'll yeah. never be treated as an outsider. Um, whether you've got a beard or no beard, whether you've got a British passport or, or an Irish passport. And that, that was the feeling it, um, in Burj al Barajna camp. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm longing to go back there. got pictures of uh, martyrs on the wall and these people welcome you because they can see you've come to do something good Positive, in, yeah. in, in solidarity 
with them. So we, we're all talking about Gaza this week and hashtag Gaza. Um, a very good friend of mine r reminded me that it's not just Gaza, it's, it's Palestine. Okay, and we shouldn't um, perpetuate this myth that Gaza is somehow a separate entity. It, it's part of Palestine. It's Palestine. And the Palestinians living in Bergel Barajne in Lebanon, in Shatila in Lebanon, which we also visited, in, in Yarmouk in Syria, which is under siege at the moment. The Palestinians everywhere are, are part of the same struggle and they're all longing for, for the same thing. So every time we remember Gaza, let's just remember the bigger the picture, which is the Palestinian Nakba and the Palestinians everywhere. Even the Western media is waking up and, and people like Jon Snow are telling it like it is. Even if he can't tell it on Channel 4, he's putting it on YouTube and telling it like it is. The, the, the social media is exposing uh, the, the Western mainstream media. They're biased because they have an agenda and because... Um, What's the agenda? The, well, Zionism is the, is the ideology. Um, we know what that means. And the British state is aligned with that. Therefore, the British state media will, will be... Uh, aligned. No, with, people, with the people are confusing Zionism with an everyday Jew. Well, so this is this I, is this is where the misconceptions coming in. You know, it's like when a 9/11 happened, uh, the Americans went and battered everyone that had a turban on, for you know, poor poor Sikhs had absolutely nothing to do think, with it. I, you know, I think people are, I think people are waking up, and if you want to meet an everyday Jew, the Jews that are there every day that there's a, a demonstration outside the Israeli embassy are the most religious and the, and the most orthodox and when the demo is there on a Saturday and the, I was the, there the. on a Saturday and I saw Khalid Ismail who we hope will return to the show they're there and they walk there because their religion uh, m means they can't take a car uh, on, on a Saturday and they are the most critical um, of Israel and the most ardent supporters of, of the Palestinian people so it's nothing to do with but this I'm saying you've got, you got to put it out there yeah. Yeah. Well, like that you've got, you got to educate yourself yeah. people need you know, it I think, sorry I, th I just think that what Julian is basically trying to say overall mm. in conclusion mm -hmm. is that the media has changed meaning um, if you look back at 9-11 you know every single channel you, you, you turned on was maybe biased to, to whatever the agenda was. But now, where you've got, you know, the internet and so many different avenues mm. of media coming through from people like even, like ourselves, yeah. normal everyday people who just want to expose the truth. Yeah. It's not about being biased, it's about speaking the truth. Yeah. I think that's what's important. And I think what's happening now is finally the truth is starting to override mm -hmm. The falsehood. The truth is coming out. The truth is coming out. And the more Sky News or the BBC want to be biased, you just got to look at a different yeah, avenue. You just flick another channel. Just another channel yeah. and you'll see yeah. some, a different yeah. opinion. And you'll expose them. And, and that's the attitude that yeah. people have to take on. I mean, right. It's not about being biased and you know, it's not a Muslim thing, it's not a Christian thing, it's not a Jewish thing, mm -hmm. it's a humanitarian yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, it's for humanity. Yeah. You know, and always search for the truth. That's right not being biased with your own, Absolutely. just for the sake of being with your own. Absolutely, 100%. And I think that pe also people that used to be on the fence and say, oh, well, you know, it's a complex conflict and they've been going on for thousands of years. It, that's a myth, it hasn't. But they have now seen the, the disparity and the, the disproportionate murder. And uh, it's just a tragedy that it took a thousand lives plus for, for them to see that. Didn't you see it before? And counting. Yeah, and counting. Maybe now you see it because it's on your Facebook feed, or now you've got well, a few I more think, channels. I think one of the, well, one of the good things I've seen... ...coming out and people have access to the truth, and the truth will set you free. Ah, oh, beat me to my punchline. I, yeah. I need to say that.